One small town New England family living out their adventures one day at a time, sharing for the whole world to see. This is Build a Lot Acres. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. Welcome back, friends, to Build a Lot Acres. In today's episode, we're going to talk about monster firewood rounds and different ways that you can deal with them. So if you process a lot of firewood, it's only a matter of time before you're going to come across some monster-sized wood, like this 42-inch red oak, for example. Rounds this size, even 16 inches in length, can weigh upwards of 1,000 pounds in some cases. So we need to find easier ways to deal with them. Even these 24 to 26 inch diameter rounds of black locust are going to be real heavy, maybe in the three to 400 pound range. Certainly too heavy to want to pick up by hand. Now me and Old Gray, as I like to call it, with my little trailer here, have hauled a lot of loads of wood over the years. Some of it was easy, small stuff and easy to load. Others was not so easy. It was bigger wood. But I'll tell you a secret. The big wood has a ton of splits in it. So there's no sense in letting it go to waste. It is some work, but if you come up with some strategies, it can be done. So small wood's easy to handle. You can split it with an ax and you're done. No biggie. But once you get into the bigger rounds, you need to find a different way. And some wood, like this red oak, almost seems to split itself. This was actually split by itself in a storm, and as I bucked it up, it just naturally fell apart. It was beautiful, but that often isn't the case. So the first way we're going to talk about is brute force. Picking it up by hand. Now, this is going to be determined by how strong you are, how much you can lift, and how much energy you have. Most people are going to tire of this way quickly, which is why we're going to move quickly into our next way, hand splitting. Now, like I said, small pieces are easy to contend with, but when you get bigger pieces, like this, you need a heavier tool, like a maul. Now, for the majority of pieces, a few whacks with them all is going to take care of business. But there are going to be pieces where, no matter how many times you hit it, it feels like you're hitting against a rubber tire and they just bounce off. It can be really aggravating, but there is another way you can get them done. And that's going to be using steel wedges. Now, for the majority of pieces, one steel wedge is going to do the job. But you are going to have pieces that are going to require two, maybe even three wedges. And I've also had wood that I sunk three wedges in. The heads were flush with the wood and there was water seeping out and it still wouldn't split. You got to know when to give it up at some point. Sometimes the wood just isn't worth going after. But I do recommend using a long steel bar like this to pry the wood apart because there's going to be little fibers that are going to hold on even after splitting it with a steel wedge. But like I said, if you're on a budget and you need to get big pieces of wood into manageable size pieces, then a maul or a sledgehammer and wedges is probably going to be your best option. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It does require quite a bit of energy though, and it's going to require you to be fairly decently in shape. Now here you can see me showing another way to get these to come apart. After you get the wedge in there, you're still going to have strings attached. I don't recommend using them all in this fashion just for demonstration purposes, but it is another way to get it apart. And that's going to lead us into our next way, moving up the ladder, and that is noodling. Now, noodling is essentially when you rip a round of wood with a chainsaw. You go with the grain and you create these long slivers of wood that resemble noodles. Now, it's important to note, you want to noodle with the grain, not against the grain. That's going to create fine sawdust and it's not going to be very easy on your saw and it's going to be hard to do. Another note I would like to make is when you noodle logs, even medium-sized logs like this 20 inch or so diameter red oak, you're going to want a big saw with a large power head. Here you can see a steel 660. That's a big saw. 92 cc's and roughly 7 horsepower. If you have a homeowner grade saw that's only maybe 40 or 50 cc's, you could noodle but it's going to take a lot longer and you're going to be limited to a shorter bar for your power head and you're just probably not going to be happy with the performance. In that case, I would probably recommend either sticking to the wedges and maul or upgrading and getting a larger saw if you think you're going to have to do a lot of noodling in the future. So let's move up the ladder again. Now we're going to talk about log lifts. 
Now, I'll start off by saying not all wood splitters are capable of having a log lift added to them. Many are, but some aren't. And depending on the size of your splitter, the log lift that you can get for it may only be good to lift a smaller amount of weight than you need to lift. It might only be good for two, three, four hundred pounds in some cases. Now, the bigger the splitters get, the better the chances are that the log lifts are going to be ruggeder and have a bigger capacity. But even the bigger ones aren't going to be able to handle the largest rounds of wood like we saw earlier, the 42-inch red oak. Very few log lifts are going to lift that size round. Even this commercial grade splitter that we see here might only have a five, six, or 700 pound lift capacity on that log lift. So depending on what splitter you have, the log lift is most likely going to pick up anything you're going to throw at it. But there are going to be times you have to keep in mind that the round might be just too big. This is about as big of a round as you can expect most log lifts to pick up. This is probably a 32 to 36 inch diameter piece of wood. And that's a big piece of wood for most log lifts to contend with. So that's going to lead us into a crane. Now this is somewhat similar to a log lift, but it's a little different. Most cranes you're going to see are either going to mount to the splitter itself, to a pickup bed, or maybe to a trailer. And obviously the objective is to pick the wood up and put it onto your splitter beam. That's usually either, that's usually either done with a hand winch, either a bottle jack that cranks, or perhaps a battery winch. Now keep in mind, these are going to be much slower than a traditional hydraulic log lift. But they do have the nice feature that they can swing away from the splitter and pick a round up and then swing it onto the beam. Whereas a log lift, you have to roll the round onto the log lift. The other disadvantage to these is they're going to cost quite a bit by the time you buy the winch, the materials, the crane, the grapple, etc. You could be into it for several hundred dollars or more at some point. So that's going to lead us into a machine. Now obviously this is the most expensive way. You're going to have to have a fairly decently sized machine, but it opens up a lot of doors. You can use the front end loader bucket to pick up rounds and stage them near your splitter. So all you got to do is do a small horizontal movement to get it onto the beam. You can also use something like this, a set of rear forks. These three point hitch forks are nice. You could lower them to the ground, put your round onto the pallet or whatever you have, and then pick it up to the splitter beam. Here's a set of front forks on my old Ingersoll 648 high loader. This was a nice machine. I wish I had kept it. I actually made this set of forks and these came in really handy. This machine was small. It was about the size of a garden tractor, so it worked out nice in the wood lot. But I could actually pick up rounds like this and almost rest my forks right on the splitter beam, allowing me easy transfer of the round to the splitter. So this worked out well. This loader picked up around 600 pounds, give or take, to the full height. So there weren't too many rounds that I could not pick up with this machine. Another way is you could make attachments for your three-point hitch or your front. This is actually a homemade saw buck I made. If you haven't seen that video, please check it out. This works great for picking up logs, bucking them, and getting them to the heights I need. Here's another shot of a front end loader. This is actually my brother's machine. You can see you can lower it to the ground, roll the logs right into it. So the last thing we're going to talk about is specialty machines. Now these can be a number of different machines. Here you can see an inverted splitter, which you basically lower onto the round and split it. These can go on a skid steer, a mini, the front of a tractor. It's basically just a regular wood splitter that's mounted upside down. There's a number of different brands that make these, as you're going to see in the slides. But these are going to cost, you know, probably $1,500 or $2,000, and it's only kind of a one-trick pony. So most people that just do firewood for themselves aren't going to be looking at getting something like this. If you only got big rounds or if you did commercial logging or firewood, I would recommend getting one of these if you already have the machine. But here we're going to see another specialty machine. This is a three-point grapple. Again, very nice to have for logging and skidding, but how often are you really going to use it versus how much it costs? You have to keep that in mind. And the last specialty machine we're going to show is a logging trailer. This actually has a grapple. These are really nice, but you're probably looking at at least 15 to 20 grand for this machine. So I would recommend the other ways first.